this is a case which has been created to facilitate learning in the business plan creation part so it's a simulated case study and it's on a venture called mentor app which is a simulated venture uh, so let's have niharika give us a little bit more detail about what this venture is all about so niharika all yours could you tell us a little bit more about mentor app uh, welcome everyone i hope you've enjoyed reading the mentor app case study and uh, when we actually started creating this uh, simulation it was uh, because we realized that uh, while all our cases are of real ventures and real companies uh, which which are getting formed which are actually on the ground many of them were a little hesitant in sharing their financials and projections and their numbers with us especially because all of this goes in the public domain and that is why we went back to an idea that has been brewing in Vadwani Foundation for time immemorial and has also taken uh, you know uh, shape and form various shapes and forms now so uh, what we did is we went back to that idea and we developed it for uh, like a for profit venture and uh, and that's how mentor app came around so let me take you through what mentor app is and what is the genesis of the idea for mentor app uh, would you mind if i share my screen aarti that will be great niharika thank you so much sure so mentor app started with a very simple idea and a very real problem that both entrepreneurs face at one side and mentors face on the other so entrepreneurs need mentors and mentors need entrepreneurs right because mentors come from that place where they want to give back to the ecosystem uh, which has actually propped them up and got them to the position where they are and mentors obviously uh, and entrepreneurs rather obviously need mentors now there needs to be a match making that needs to happen between these entrepreneurs and mentors so a uh, mentor app is a ai powered tinder like tool right so you swipe left and you swipe right and when when the match is there between the entrepreneur and the mentor you know that you met uh, then you know it's a match made in heaven and uh, it basically connects uh, these two parties together and uh, wants to bring about you know the best of uh, the best of technology to do this matching so there is a lot of ai powered uh, data uh, simu- uh, data crunching that happens at the back end so that we can do the best kind of matching and then there is a mutually beneficial interaction that transpires at the end of this co- at the end of these conversations that happen so how does this happen like i said it is it uses proprietary ml techniques Uh, and deep minds the ecosystem and uh, we want to do the perfect matching so that uh, uh, entrepreneurs set out what they need from this mentor conversation and mentors also set out what are their core area of expertise and which are the kind of mentors they would like to mentor and then uh, there is a, a conversation that happens between them this is a sub- sub- subscription based platform and uh, subscribers can uh, it helps uh, both mentors and entrepreneurs subs- uh, monetize their interactions sounds very very interesting um this actually i think you've covered my second question also niharika in terms of why would you choose this problem to solve you've explained that however would you like to give us a little bit more insight into that perhaps anything that sure, you have sure absolutely solved? So uh if you look at the core issues that uh startups have you know uh the core issues are that they don't have access to mentors and experts you know and there may be a particular problem that they are looking for and they just they so it's not a one size fits all you know you want a mentor for something and you want b mentor for something and a c mentor for something but you want one mentor who can look at your business so you you need different mentors at different points in time and uh, entrepreneurs you know have they they have to rely organically on their network to actually find these mentors and it's more a game of chance or luck you may luck in or you may luck out also 
right um and and before you go into the conversation you really don't know what's going to come out of it a lot of times entrepreneurs feel as if they are obliged to take the mentor's advice because they've taken their time and they don't really want to take their advice so you know there's a lot of um, th- there's no reliable information on how successful the mentor has been in these mentoring conversations and what has happened and what has transpired with those mentors so these are the problems from the startup's perspective from the mentor side the issues that the mentors face are that these mentoring conversations are predominantly disorganized you know you it really depends on when a entrepreneur comes up and asks you for their time for your time right you don't you cannot predict it also uh, when a startup comes and asks for your time uh, it's not just that you can start you know uh, giving advice from just from the moment go uh, a lot of mentors take time to understand the startup's business the venture and the problem very deeply they do some other research as well and then give advice now after putting in and investing so much time energy and effort what happens is that if these entrepreneurs then just vanish into thin air the mentors don't know if there has been any follow through on the advice that they have actually given to the entrepreneurs and that really leaves them in the lurch and the high road you know they don't know what's happened the third issue from the mentors perspective is that while they're doing all of this there's no uh, there's no platform where they can actually publicize the fact that they have uh that they have come a certain path and have been uh have uh, gained a certain proficiency in mentoring and what are their core areas of expertise right there's there's no place for them to showcase their own proficiency and credibility and the fourth is that uh you know like i mentioned the time that is spent on these uh, on these interactions is high and there's no tangible return uh for the time and effort that is spent there so so these are the problems that that are being faced at both ends and mentor app essentially wants to be a marketplace for both entrepreneurs and mentors to match and meet each other and uh, be able to interact with each other so that's where we are that sounds absolutely amazing i think it's a it's definitely a problem worth solving so niharika in a nutshell could you explain to us what the value prop for mentor app is i'll uh, try and explain it with the help of analogies uh, and uh, you know how different uh, startups that have become unicorns in their own right so when we were looking at mentor app we uh, wanted to make it in such a way that it has a tender like matching experience right uh, it gives a airbnb like rating experience and it gives a professional community like linkedin so these were three important aspects that we were looking to meld and bind uh, when we were looking at mentor apps so that's what we were looking at delivering to both the mentors and entrepreneurs and if you like to look at what are the benefits that could accrue to them then a uh, mentor app would be like a virtual watering hole between the entrepreneurs and mentors uh we already talked about the ai ml we already talked about the tinder like swipe in uh a couple of things uh, additional is that uh, uh it will provide a virtual community for entrepreneurs to share their highs and lows it's like an it's like a forum that brings entrepreneurs together like you know the the feeling of a tribe a feeling of belonging all of that uh entrepreneurs will also be able to rate their conversation from the mentors and see that you know uh which uh, mentor actually gave me the right kind of advice so there will be like a five star rating on the uh, on the app and therefore it for both the parties it's a great place for them to grow their networks when we look at the mentor specifically uh, the uh, the mentor app wants uh, to graduate to a level where it provides a lot of material learning material for both the entrepreneurs and mentors right whatever what's happening new and uh, in the, in in different spaces in different uh, industries and uh, 
you know what's happening in your tech in different industries how what are the major disruptors but specifically for mentors we are also looking to give them certain um, certain developmental material because this is another untapped white space you know where we don't have uh, a clear structured mentor development uh, path so that is what the, the app would also look to do uh, there would be systematic rewards and recognition so you know there is a point where you can become a super mentor and you can then uh, begin mentoring other mentors as well uh the reviews uh and scores that they get is something that mentors can also showcase to uh, talk about or uh, to prove the efficacy of their mentoring conversations they can keep connected with the startup to track their journey so uh these are you know a uh, lot of uh, points that are there are points of friction for both the entrepreneur and the mentor when they are having these conversations which the app tries to cater to uh while while they are facilitating these conversations it sounds an absolutely win win situation i think you've been able to get the best for both the mentors as well as the entrepreneur it sounds amazing harika thank you so the next is a million dollar question harika a question that every entrepreneur is looking at uh while this is a brilliant value proposition what really is your business model and how are you planning to make money out of this well uh the app is presently at a very nascent stage and uh therefore the business model is fairly simple presently right we didn't want to make it very complicated because at the end of the day uh we want to take it to an mvp level and see how it really works so the concept is very simple um the, the from the from the entrepreneur's perspective the offering is of a mentor hour where there are one on one sessions which are purchased in advance by the entrepreneur and paid obviously by the by the entrepreneur mentee the standard size is a 10 hour pack and the price is 10k so if you really look at it it is very very economically priced because you are getting a mentor of your choice you are uh, and you can uh, and you can even stagger these conversations uh, over a period of 3 months 6 months you know whatever however you would like to stagger these conversations uh, and you're not getting just one mentor you can actually have different mentors for different conversations so you know you have like an a la carte menu of sorts and you can choose a mentor for every conversation so uh, to a very large extent i mean it's almost as much as you would go for and have a drink in a pub and and uh, you know want to to uh, have a conversation so that's the price point that we are really putting at from the uh, mentors perspective that we already spoke about that there's a structured pathway towards mentor development and to become you know a, a credible source of authority in this field uh, there is a small honorarium we will not call it a return it is a very small honorarium that the mentor would receive just so that it is not completely pro bono uh and there is some skin in the game for the mentors as well and that is the amount on a relative times so that's about 4k for those 10 conversations um the app also uh, wants to launch additional revenue streams for example in app advertising mentor event uh, mentor connect events and sponsorships and and stuff like that so niharika this really sounds good i think you've you've really thought about a lot of things while putting this together Uh, a business model a business plan is i'm sure you'll agree quite a complicated process it's also a very iterative process you just don't do it once right and uh, there are lots of moving pieces when you put your business plan together so uh, would you want to tell us a little bit more about how did you actually go about this what were some of the starting you know what starting point did you look at and perhaps that's we that'll be interesting for our budding entrepreneurs as well sure and i and i quite empathize with all the entrepreneurs who may be listening into this fire side chat you know uh what, the biggest question is how do i start where do i start you know and especially for those who are who don't come from a finance background we hear you it is difficult 
right so i, I think a good point to start is uh, to start with the numbers that you want to achieve let's say at the fir- at the end of the first year right um and and to get that you should have your five year vision in place and then back backward extrapolate it right to see what what would be the number that you would have uh, in your first year but that should be your uh, start point and uh, to do this even we started out with the numbers that we want to achieve in year 1 and uh, that's where we uh, that's how we started moving forward so the way i'm hearing you say it you start with the numbers that you want to reach really you know in, in terms of revenues and all of that so basically it's your sales plan that looks like a really good starting point would you want to give us some more information about how you actually went about developing it sure absolutely so beginning with the sales plan actually what we did was we started looking at the market size and we started looking at okay how what is the size of the market now all of you uh, entrepreneurs i'm sure you've done this in the past right so uh, what's your uh, overall market and what's your niche and how are you going to target your niche so i'm just going to quickly take you through how we did it right so uh, presently we're looking at just the indian market so the total population of india within the age group of 18 to 64 which probably is the age where you begin becoming entrepreneurs is about 741 million now we just took uh, an estimation based on certain uh, government based statistics that about 6% of our population could possibly be entrepreneurs uh, and that would lead to a number of about 37 million and uh, let's say about 15% of these entrepreneurs would be willing to uh, consider using an app to uh, to meet their mentors right because mostly you know entrepreneurs could be uh, uh, people who are even you know trying to set up a small shop uh, uh, in their uh, in that in their town so we are not talking about those kind of entrepreneurs who may be trying to set up a uh, like a self employed uh, entrepreneur but mostly somebody who is actually looking to scale it up and make it a business as you go forward so so these were the the big numbers that we started out with and on the other hand we also needed to see that you know do we have a supply side problem do we have the mentors to uh, to actually cater to all these entrepreneurs we didn't want to be in a situation where we have so many entrepreneurs and we have a dearth of uh, uh, mentors so we said okay uh, which is that one place where mentors would be available and obviously we realized that linkedin is one you know uh, already ready resource of uh, uh, of uh, highly uh, highly valued uh, professionals so that's about 62 million professionals on linkedin and let's say 1% of these could possibly become mentors and can actually uh, get invitations to register on the app as a mentor so these were the starting numbers that we uh, that we you know got our head around okay so the, so that's the overall pie that we are looking at even now you can see that there's a obvious mismatch you know that the number of mentors are much lesser than the number of entrepreneurs so therefore that white space that you see between the need of the entrepreneur and the availability of mentors is quite uh, uh, is quite visible which is why that mentor development path is something that is going to gain a lot of importance as we go forward now from from this starting point we looked at both the top down and the bottom up approach to our market size estimation so if we say that from the entrepreneur side and right now we're looking at the entrepreneurs here so uh let's say you know we got about 6 million and uh, just using the top down approach 60% of that could be our addressable market which would be and this is just mathematics here right 4.2 million and 10% could be our obtainable market so about 4 million 4 lakh entrepreneurs which sounds very good but then you know we realize that we need to even do a bottom up approach and see how much of that obtainable market is actually going to be obtainable in year 1 so when we look at the uh, bottom up approach we saw that you know we are presently on several 
entrepreneur networks uh, for example the thai network the vadwani network the entrepreneur forum etc and uh, this would give us ready access to about 10000 entrepreneurs right and these entrepreneurs are ones that are really looking for mentors because they, that's why they are on these networks and hence we have used a higher factor for uh, converting our serviceable addressable market from sam to song we have taken it at about 40% here because these are entrepreneurs who are actually in these pubs and watering holes looking for mentors so that's why we've got our serviceable obtainable market at about 4k for year one sounds it sounds like a really really meticulous exercise nyanika thanks for that and uh, i hope our uh, entrepreneurs have been able to take a lot of value out of this as well so that gives me you know leave me to move on to our next question and that's really in terms of getting to your customers right so what's your plan in terms of your customer acquisition strategy how are you planning to meet those numbers what's your plan on a you know month on month basis uh let's just take it for the first year for now and then you know perhaps we look at meeting you once again uh next year to see how you're doing absolutely <laughs> Okay so let's look at the customer acquisition funnel right uh before we get into the numbers so this is how a typical customer acquisition funnel looks like right the target market leads prospects customers now you can start from the top or you can start from the bottom so uh essentially we we know that our target is about 4k entrepreneurs in year 1 right that's that's our target the top of the funnel that uh, the the bottom of the funnel rather you know we need the 4k customers so we started small so what we did is we started putting together uh, how we will achieve these 4k customers and if you see it's a very you know you start really small so 50 and 75 and 100 are the numbers that we have for jan feb march and then we pick up traction as we move forward so by the time we reach december it's about 700 entrepreneurs right so the total is comes to about 3800 which is close to the 4k number that we talked about right now we then started saying okay if this is what we need to achieve then how many prospects do we need so we applied a multiple of 10 here uh, that you know if we have 500 entrepreneurs then about uh, 10 of them would convert and to get these 500 prospects we would need about 2000 again we applied a multiple of 5 here because we said okay we would need about 2500 uh people who you know say yes i am interested in this kind of a service and this kind of a subscription so we have already started our marketing activity and we have uh, started uh, sending out these marketing uh, mailers and we have received about 5000 uh, entrepreneurs who have just clicked on a button to say yes we are interested in this kind of uh, a subscription service now we are following up with more and more information giving them a couple of conversations free so that they can actually experience it and then begin making the payment for the subscription on the mentor side as well we have already uh, got a pool of about 500 mentors who are ready to go who are or who have actually subscribed on the app so there is a lot of groundwork that has already happened now uh so so this is the customer acquisition funnel now if i take you through the sales forecast right in terms of numbers these are the numbers that we are looking to achieve so in the year 1 we are looking to achieve about 3.8 uh, crores uh right. in in terms of our actual sales right and you can see how so for a number of about 50 customers we are uh, basically multiplying it by 10000 to get the number for january and february and so on uh we are looking to say that you know in the first couple of months that in uh, jan february march we would actually be working 
with the uh, co-founders who are going to be doing a lot of the groundwork and uh, of onboarding the entrepreneurs on the platform and uh, as we go forward and we start gaining more traction we will start adding more sales people and this will not be just a sales team this is going to be a hunter and farmer team so a sales as well as a relationship management team is what we are looking to set up so as you see as you go forward on the sheet you will see that you know our first sales person would come in uh, in the month of may and the second a uh, sales person will come in in the month of july so you know we put we staggered the hire of the sales uh, and relationship management team as we go forward and we've kept the load on the co-founders we we steadily try to bring it down not that it is too much of a difference but the co-founders want to be uh you know really in front of the customer at least in the first year as well so that they are they have their ear to the ground and they can see how the entrepreneurs are responding to the uh, uh to to the uh, subscription offer the correlation here is um with the sales plan i'm just showing you know how the sales people are getting added so our first sales person sales and relationship management person comes in the month of may then we have another one that comes in the month of july and then we have two new that come in the month of september and then the last one that will come in the month of november so that's how we staggered the uh, sales and relationship management team and that's essentially our sales and people plan so niharika thank you so much i think that's given us a very very good idea about how you're planning uh, you know your startup strategy for the next one year in terms of your sales the number of people that you will have on street your feet on street all of that another very interesting aspect for most startups is how do they do their entire financial planning uh would you throw some more light on how you've done that for your organization absolutely so uh again when you see something like a financial plan, most financial plans that are available uh, on the internet also you know they are uh, they go into a lot of details so, you know the typical financial plan will have a few statements it will have a startup cost you need to figure out your pnl your balance sheet your break even cogs you know all of these things and it can become pretty daunting for entrepreneurs so uh, our uh, endeavor in this conversation is to see how we can simplify it and uh, fill it up in the uh, uh, in in a manner which is both logical as well as realistic at the same time so let me try and show you how uh, we done it for mentor app one of the best places to start is putting up your startup costs now what are startup costs startup costs are those costs that you incur before you even start your business right and in other words these are also called sunk costs right so uh, startup costs in this case we've taken about uh, 15000 for business registration we've taken some product development costs the app is uh, presently uh, at an mvp stage and it requires a little more uh, uh, em- embellishment so that it can become uh, a full blown product the website requires a lot of work and uh, we need to figure that out we uh, also need to uh, look at uh, purchasing computer systems for all those who are coming into the sales and uh, marketing team so one of the first places that we are going to start talking about is uh, the startup costs so in this case we've taken the following uh, th- uh, costs into account the business registration fee is the pro- product development the app is in at an mvp stage presently and we have to get it uh, and add a few more embellishments onto it to make it uh, absolutely ready so there are uh, some uh, product development costs the cost of a website design and the website development and the cost of computer systems for the sales and marketing teams right uh, there would be some capital work in progress that would be there at the end of the year so that is also uh, something that has been factored in Ap- apart from that there's going to be some launch expenses that would be required to launch the product a rental deposit for the office uh, stationery supplies miscellaneous you know all of this needs to be accounted for right 
now uh, if you look at all of this it comes to about uh, 10 lakhs or uh, 1 million and uh, on the bottom of the sheet we've accounted as to where this 1 million is actually going to come from so uh, 5 lakhs are going to come from the share capital that the team is putting in the two co-founders and then there would be a 5 lakh loan that will come from uh, friends and family so that's how uh, the startup cost has uh, been defined so in in uh, what you actually done is you looked at every probable cost that you will need to sustain your business for the next one year and these are basic investments that you will need to do any which ways right absolutely yes would you recommend keeping a sort of a buffer here in harika is that already done in your startup cost we actually kept a buffer and uh, and you know there are three kinds of estimates we had taken a conservative estimate a realistic estimate and an optimistic estimate right when we when it comes to costs we want to keep it as uh, as high as possible as conservative as possible so we've kept that estimate and put it up here right right so that's helpful and what we we spoke about quite a few heads uh once we've done with the cost you know startup cost which is the next one that you would recommend entrepreneurs look at so what we did and for every entrepreneur it will be different but what we did is we looked at the startup costs and we said okay these are going to be a sunk cost in the business and the next thing that we looked at is okay let's look at our cost of goods sold so for each uh, uh for each subscription that we are going to be uh, selling what is going to be the cost for making that sales so that is the next item that we looked at right so when we look at the cogs that's the cost of goods sold we are going to see it from two perspectives one is is uh, what is it going to be for each hour and then we are going to extrapolate it for the 10 hour subscription pack right so uh, for each hour that uh, that of conversation that will happen between the entrepreneur and the mentor 400 rupees is going to be the mentor engagement fee about uh, 200 is allocated for server charges certain coordination charges and certain miscellaneous charges that would uh, that uh, that can be uh, allocated to each hour of mentoring right so that brings us to about 700 rupees and the for the entire pack of 10 hours obviously this would extrapolate to about 7000 rupees so a cost sold per unit is going to be about 7000 rupees right so therefore any business which looks at you know is looking at doing this will need to keep their own uh, pieces in consideration you've obviously looked at it from the point of view of how much you are spending on your product being the kind it is absolutely so uh the markup that then you've taken is 10 so is that a general markup niharika that is prevalent in your industry so we've actually looked at it from not from a markup perspective but actually how uh, what is it that the customer would be willing to pay from a value perspective right uh and how, and what are the existing alternatives so we actually benchmark to how much would you spend in a pub or in any other forum if you were to get into a club of this sort and you had to uh pay in for a uh, for an entry right what would be that cost so we have taken that same cost of 1000 rupees for one conversation and we've we've assigned that as the value so we've done a value based pricing rather than a cost plus cost pricing. based got that got that we looked at the pnl statement and for us it was very simple for us to build it because we have the price per unit already at 10k we have the number of units also uh you know we had worked that out as well and uh, the cash sales per month is a simple multiplication of the price into the unit so we will at the end of the year we will have sold about 3870 units and uh, at a cost of 10k each unit so that gives us a total uh, revenue of uh, 3 crore 87 lakhs right and that's what you are seeing up on your screen here the cost of goods sold also we have just calculated so it's 7k per unit and uh, just multiplying it by the number of units that are sold so this gives us our cost of goods sold 
after our cost of goods sold then we started looking at the other expenses that would uh, that would accrue to this venture so we would have to spend uh, substantially and regularly on marketing and sales uh, on customer service and uh, uh, on all kinds of utilities office supplies rent you know these are other expenses that would accrue to us and obviously there would be salaries uh, as as we get started it's just the co-founder salaries but we worked out our people plan and we saw that our salaries would keep going up month on month as we start adding additional manpower so those have also been factored so in our people plan we also looked at what would be the average cost of uh, the uh, new employees that would come in and we figured that it would be around 15k some may come at a little higher some may come at a little lower but it was about 15k so that is how we have calculated our salaries uh, based on our people plan and when they are going to be coming mm-hmm. in so you will see a progression that is happening on the salary statement uh, when you total all of this up we get our total expenses right so our total expenses come to about 3.3 crores as you can see here now from here uh, two important numbers get populated uh one is the gross profit and the second is the net profit margin so as you can see uh even though in jan feb march you know we are still make, we are still doing a positive uh, gross margin but our net margins are uh, going to be lower in the first couple of uh, in the first quarter right but as the number of units sold start increasing the economies of scale come into play and uh, that's how you know we we will possibly have a uh, an average net profit margin in the next year of about 15% uh, that's what we uh, that's what we are aiming for in year 1 this is very comprehensive and we can see the various components that you built out earlier your sales plan your people plan all that really coming into play over here and you have a complete comprehensive structure um typically how much time does it take for a startup or how much time did you take for example to build all these pieces mm-hmm. out here so actually it's like a lego or a jenga mm-hmm. block right so if your basics are clear putting together your pnl or your income statement is actually very simple you need to do the thinking before you come and start populating these numbers right so if you know what is going to be your cogs what is going to be your uh, you know the number of units you want to sell and then you know you create like a base and then you can keep playing with these numbers so you know finalizing these numbers may take time because you may want to play with it and see what you want to present to investors versus what you want to keep for internal consumption and for other purposes but uh, if your basics and if you've got your building blocks in place putting this together the pnl and the balance sheet just does not take more than maybe maybe an hour's time but the 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 homework before that needs to be done right and i guess that's where a lot of your time must have gone in so Absolutely. we've got these pieces in what's the next piece that you concentrated on so a typical progression from the pnl account uh, is the balance sheet right and uh, the balance sheet actually gets uh, in most templates it gets auto populated and i'm glad you know even this template gave us this, this opportunity uh, so uh we've got our cash in hand which uh, actually uh, flows in from our cash flow statement right it gets auto populated from there we've got our fixed assets which are uh, which which we've already created right uh, those were our computers and other workstations uh, so and there are some intangible assets that we have also created because uh, we you know we've created our website and we've created uh, our app you know these are not tangible uh, assets per se so there is a value right now it's just a cost value that has been attached to it it's just being whatever was the price or the cost so if you see this number it is exactly the same number that we yeah for our startup cost so it's exactly the same number that we've attached here so we've kept it very simple for now because 
you know this is a distribution of heads at the end of the day so uh, so so that's how our uh, balance sheet uh, is created and when it comes to the current liabilities also uh, you know we we may have some accounts payable or we may have some interest interest will not be there in our case because uh, we got uh, a loan free uh, uh, an interest free loan from friends and family but uh, but essentially we kept it you know clean over here and we've kept the loans that we've taken from friends and family that comes up right yeah uh, if there was an in- interest component you would have had to add that amount as Absolutely. well right now it's not there so that's that's great yeah i must say and, you have uh, some really nice friends and family <laughs> and uh, the reserves and surplus is uh, another number that comes directly from the forecast pnl so this is basically our net profits right and th- this is the reserves and surplus that comes directly on this side so right. uh, so basically that's how our uh, balance sheet uh, is made it's important to see that our balance sheet matches so uh, our uh, total current uh, and fixed assets should match our total liabilities and uh, you know you can we can always play around with these numbers and uh, mostly investors don't look at you know typical line items in your balance sheet as long as it makes sense as a as a big picture yeah the overall picture should should make sense i guess and i think those numbers are talking for themselves and once you start i'm sure you'll start looking at seeing where you are in terms of your target versus achievement and you know then those numbers change themselves right, right. absolutely this has been really interesting so what's the next piece then the next piece that we will get into is the cash flow statement and for us as is with any other venture the cash flow statement is extremely important because we need to kind of see we we need to make some uh, uh, investments in our uh, computers and other systems and we need to ensure that and we also have to pay our salaries because we are ramping up the team so we need to ensure that we are not going to be cash negative at any point in time so from that perspective it's important for us to look at our cash flow statement so the starting cash position actually comes from uh, the uh, you know the, the it's it's a very simple calculation you know whatever money we started in you know our uh, paid up capital and the loans that we've taken minus the entire uh, outgo of the startup cost so that is our um, starting cash position so from there you know we start looking at what are our sales what is our cost of goods sold and our operating expenses and uh, that gives us what is happening on a monthly basis to our cash flow we are also looking at some new assets that are going to be purchased so may july september and november is when we are looking at uh, a few assets to be purchased but despite that we will be in a very decent cash position uh, in the organization that's very clear and i can see that you are increasing and it ties up beautifully with the earlier plan that you showed us uh, i guess it's very important for any startup to look at this piece especially you can't afford to be cash strapped and plan absolutely. that out well yeah absolutely that's the conundrum that most startups fall yes. into you know, because you don't have uh, so yeah every startup you know while they're looking at all of these pieces i think the first thing that most entrepreneurs know it's okay we're going to invest a certain amount of money and only then we see start seeing some amount of returns but i think most startups uh will look at a very pertinent question and that is you know great all this looks fine but when are we actually breaking even and when do we actually start seeing profits when does that happen is there some sort of an analysis that you did for that as well then we started looking at a break even analysis right we know a few things we knew for certain what are our what is our average selling price that is about 10000 our cost is about 7000 these are you know the knowns uh, our fixed cost also we realized is uh, something that we cannot really change uh, too much we can't play around with it too much right we wanted to keep it uh, conservatively on the higher side so we know that our fixed costs are at about uh, 33 lakhs uh, for for the entire year so uh, with a gross margin of about 30% right if we just do our entire uh, fixed cost that is of 33 lakhs and divided by a gross margin of about 30% then the sales required to break 
even uh, in INR in, or in rupees would be about uh, 11 uh, would be about uh, 1 crore uh, 12 lakhs right so that's the number that we know we need to hit now the number of units that would be required to break even we simply need to take this uh, INR number or the number in rupees and divide it by 10,000 which is the average sales price per unit so we know that for, to break even, we need to have this number of 1,125 units, right? Now, let's mm -hmm. quickly go back to our PNL account and see which month do we exactly hit this magic number, right? So, if we go and uh, keep, you know, you know, see the scroll bar uh, on the bottom of the screen. So, you'll see that in the month of July is when we are actually hitting this break even point of 11, uh, 1125 units so july is when we will break even and after july whatever money we are actually making is going to go into is, is basically because of the economies of scale that are kicking in and that's going to go into our coffers and will help to uh, generate the next uh, round of revenue and growth for us Niharika, all the best. I hope that the uh, conservative figures that you've taken for your fixed costs is actually going to help and you're able to control that. And in that case, perhaps your break even happens, you know, perhaps earlier than July. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> all right. All right. So, uh, Niharika, now, I'm sure now as a business person, right, you have to keep on top of your your game you need to watch out for certain signals to see whether your plan is actually uh, really succeeding are you know is it is it really working out what were your targets what are your actuals what are some key factors that you should be watching out for so have you been able to define that for your business mm -hmm. and if yes Absolutely. could you tell us what they are and what was your thought process while you defined those key metrics for you sure so uh, a couple of key metrics actually we've even we've spoken about earlier as well so we've already talked about a gross profit and net profit right so that is something that we are going to be watching very very keenly uh, and uh, those are numbers so we, this is the projected uh, PNL but we are going to be actually looking at this on a monthly basis to see where we are uh, on this 30 percent gross profit and how we are doing on our net profit numbers um, apart from that, a few other key metrics that we are going to be looking at very closely are the LTV or CLV, the CAC and the comparison between the LTV CAV as well, CAC as well. So the way that we've calculated our uh, customer lifetime value uh, is, you know, we've said that the, let's assume very, very conservatively that every customer just comes to us once and our retention period you know is just that one year let's i mean let's just assume that so then in that case our customer lifetime value is just 10000 right and we know that this will not be the case that that entrepreneurs will possibly there will be uh, repeats uh, of these entrepreneurs coming in and hopefully what we are hoping for is that these entrepreneurs actually after a period of time begin feeding into our mentor pool right Right, right. So that's the uh, that's the vision as we go forward. But for now, we will see say that our customer lifetime value is let's say just going to be about ten thousand rupees. Now let's look at how we look at uh, uh, coming at the customer acquisition cost. Right. right. So customer acquisition cost is uh, you know we've we've uh, kept it at about. Um, 14,64,000 and this number comes again from our forecast PNL, right? So if you look at these two numbers, which is the cost of marketing and promotion and digital marketing and customer services. So this is the cost that we are saying is our customer acquisition cost. So it's about 14,64,000 and that's the number that we have taken uh, to calculate our CAC, right? Uh, the number of uh, right. we've already we've already spoken about the fact that you know we would have about three thousand eight hundred and seventy units uh, yes. in in this year, right? 
so uh, basically our tac is going to be uh, the uh, expenses that for sales acquisition and conversion upon the number of units so the for, so it would take us about 378 rupees and uh, to acquire a customer and uh, the ratio seems to be very healthy right now any yeah. at any point in time you know if your clv is or lpv is greater than csc uh, you know it's considered to be healthy so for now on paper it looks very healthy and we hope that we will continue to convert this uh, into tangible results as well absolutely i think you should be able to do that and plus the way i'm seeing it a lot of your entrepreneurs may actually become uh, good references for you which could further perhaps in the long run reduce your uh, cac even more word of mouth etc will work yeah absolutely then we we hope that your numbers become higher but this has been really really interesting uh, niharika any other insights that you would like to share with us i know the financial planning has lots of components and you've been very patient you've taken us through the entire piece of your organization however any any more tips anything else that you would like to share with uh, our viewers on this I think uh, what we need to remember is that at any point in time uh, this is an extremely iterative process so don't keep this sheet away in the cold storage in fact keep it in front of you and keep looking at it on a daily basis identify four or five key indicators that you are going to track say on uh, uh, on a monthly basis to see where you are and uh, and keep these as you know as your markers and as soon as you stop falling short uh, uh, as soon as you start falling short on one uh, you know try and analyze where is it that what is that needle mover that is bringing that parameter down to you and uh, and uh, keep a hot eye on that so that's that's my only advice and hopefully you know our uh, projections that we put together also um, you know find when the rubber meets the road we'll be able to see how they turn out absolutely thank you so much this has been really really informative i'm sure that uh, all our entrepreneurs are going to enjoy this piece and also take away a huge amount of learning from this thank you so thank much thank you very much thank you